many years where I wasn't comfortable talking about it. There was many years I was ashamed and embarrassed and just try to kind of tuck it underneath the rug, if you will. Uh, at the end of the day, there's a lot of learning lessons that came from that. And I can look at the situation. I can say, hey, poor me and cry about it. Or I can say, life didn't happen to me, it happened for me. This is actually a superpower. Welcome back to another episode of The Burn. I am Ben Newman, and you know how we do this every single week. We're going to bring you the story of an athlete, an entertainer, a celebrity, a CEO, a business professional, somebody who has recognized that why and purpose is not enough. It's that underlying burn that ignites your why and purpose and causes you to show up on the days that you don't feel like it, and especially after you win. One of the things I love doing is having the opportunity to bring you fellow Spartan dogs. If you go to Michigan State University, then you are a Spartan dog. And today's guest is an individual who shows up with passion. He shows up with fire. He shows up with conviction. And he shows up with a consistency of success. And there's some amazing connections that we share in common with how we grew up. The way he battled challenge and adversity, and I'm going to let you hear about his burn, has caused Bryce Henson to be the CEO of Fit Body Bootcamp. Everybody knows Fit Body Bootcamp. His partner, Bedros Koulian, and him have built an absolute powerhouse across this country of making a difference in people's lives. That has not only driven success for Bryce as a CEO of that unbelievable organization, but now a sought after speaker and coach using his words and his history of discipline to make a difference in people's lives. So my friend, my fellow Spartan dog and a powerful business leader today, Bryce Henson, welcome to the burn. Oh, my man, Ben, I am so fired up to be here. Appreciate you, my brother. Looking forward to our chat. Bryce, man, I, I you know, ever since I got the first DM from you, there's like, there's like, it. sometimes you get a DM from somebody, you get a video or a voice note. You're like, this guy's got energy. This is the real deal. This is not fake. He's not, it, it, he's not trying to formulate something. You're getting the real guy. And I absolutely admire that about you. Where does that natural passion and fire for life come from? Oh, I love it, man. Well, kindred spirits for sure. I felt the exact same thing. You know, I think one hand, factory installed. I've just always had this appetite to learn, to grow, having a white belt mentality uh, that's just been factory installed ever since I've been young. And um, that's part of the equation. But interestingly enough, until I heard your message at Amberly Lago's event, when we first got a chance to meet in person about the burn. And for me, that connected with me so much because I gave a keynote, I created a keynote a handful of years ago, talking about pain, passion, and purpose, finding what pain you went through in your life, developing that to a passion and then developing that ultimately into your purpose. And a similar story. I mean, we are kindred spirits. Um, I grew up in the Midwest, great place, amazing salt of the earth people, not the fitness capital of the world. And uh, going through, you know, my uh, later part of the childhood um, come from humble beginnings for first world standards. I say that because we used to run out of money before we used to run out of month. And it wasn't because of my mother, who's this salt of the earth, amazing lady from the Midwest, who all she wanted was a good life for her family and her kids. Unfortunately, she just picked the wrong guy, um, who my father, mm -hmm. very similar story to you, which is really the, where the burn started, who was addicted to drugs, gambling, and alcohol, not the trifecta for a good family upbringing. So the first 10 years of my life uh, was spent my, uh, majority of time in a trailer park in the southeast or yeah, in the southeast uh, of part of our country um, in Georgia. And it was very volatile um, just because, you know, when you're in that particular environment, you don't know how your dad is going to show up. And a lot of times he wasn't overly aggressive, but he was very sloppy. And when you're a young child and you're unsupervised and your parents are fighting and ultimately you're looking for a leader that you don't know how is going to show up, it caused fear and pain. 
and uh, and worry. And uh, that's really, if I look back at the first 10 years of my life, that's what I experienced. Um, mm -hmm. And many of you can probably, you know, relate whether it's the exact analogy or something similar. And that's why I love Ben, uh, the, the message behind the burn. But all this to say a fortuitous situation happened. And by the grace of God, uh, after, you know, uh, verbal arguments end up becoming physical. My mother almost lost her life. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. She got us out of that particular situation. We got out of Dodge. And that's where I spent the latter part of my childhood in the Midwest. And uh, while it was one, it was very good to be in a better situation, a better environment. Thankfully, our grandma, my grandma took us in. Um, on the other hand, it was challenging. And that was really the fabric of my first 20 years on the planet, um, struggling, uh, grinding and growing. But that really has shaped who I am today. So that's really the story, my story, if you will, of the burn. So, Bryce, how does that, you know, you see... And obviously, I, I saw my mother experience pain, losing her life, completely different pain. Now, my dad, our similarities, drug addict, alcoholic, bipolar, manic depressive, everything under the sun. It's the reasons why my mother divorced him. But I never saw my father. And, and I don't believe it's not to my knowledge that he ever put a hand on my mother. Seeing something like that. What type of framework does that provide and perspective in your life for a bad day? Because I, I, I want to go even deeper here, because sometimes I think people, they almost they almost run from their challenge in adversity. They don't want to talk it. They talk about it. They, they, they tuck it away into a black box. And I think one thing that you and I have in common, and it's probably why we connected so deeply before we even knew all of these commonalities. <clears throat> how are you able to, to use it for strength? even though it was so painful and how are you able to talk about it when most people resist that? Well, it's an incredible question and being very candid with you, Ben, it, there was many years where I wasn't comfortable talking about it. There was many years I was ashamed and embarrassed and just try to kind of tuck it underneath the rug, if you will. But, um, you know, growing up and, uh, you know, just developing and maturing and finally coming to the realization that, you know what, my past doesn't define me. Uh, at the end of the day, there's a lot of learning lessons that came from that. And I can look at the situation. I can say, hey, poor me and cry about it. Or I can say, life didn't happen to me. It happened for me. Mm -hmm. This is actually a superpower. What it gave me is it gave me awareness. It gave me presence. When we were stripped out of our father's house in a very good way because the situation very volatile, um, we landed in a burn. And uh, that created a lot of awareness at a very young age um, to you know, realize that being a man of means, being a man of resources, being a man that I, I'm proud of is the way better path than you know, going and following the path of my father. So no, I didn't have a strong role model in my father in terms of what to look up to, but I realized I took a step back and I realized, you know what? I actually you know, get, was given a gift. I was given a gift of what not to be so I can reverse engineer my life and to be the man I want to become. Uh, so that would be the way I've processed it. And it didn't happen overnight. It was a process, just like you know, winning is a process, as I've learned from one of the, the greatest of all times that you've had a chance to work with, the GOAT, Nick Saban. But that really struck with me because the process is how you become successful. And for me, the growth, maturity, that perspective has been a process. And I, I think you provide such an amazing example for all of our listeners, because when I learn more about you and I learn more about your story, you're an action taker. You're a doer. You don't allow the adversity or challenge to hold you back. You want to try new things. I, I remember a phone call after we met at Amberly Lagos event. We got to have a huge shout out to Amberly, just an amazing woman, leader, human being, just a wonderful, wonderful person. That's where we had the opportunity to meet in person for the first time. And after you, you reached out, we have a phone call and you asked me a bunch of questions. And a lot of what I shared were just making sure that you didn't make the mistakes that I've made on my journey and hoping that uh, some of the things that I've learned from some great mentors in my life were things that would resonate and help you. And, you know, over the years, I've gotten calls like this all the time, Bryce. But what was so meaningful for me was it was probably less than 10 days later, you went, you gave a speech. And you send me this text message and it was that same fire and energy. I could feel the fire and energy through the text message of how excited you were. You're like, I ditched the slides. I didn't do this. I allowed my words to paint my And it just, it like, it made my day because, you know, for us as coaches, you're a coach just like I am, oh, yeah. you know, as coaches, we want to share things that make a difference, but the student has to be ready to listen and to implement. 
and you've done that. And it was, it, I just wanted to share that moment because it's rare before I talk about the leader that you are, it's rare that somebody who's had the success that you have had as a leader would even reach out and say, Hey, let me ask you a few questions, Ben, maybe you can help me. And that said a lot about you as well. Oh man. Well, I appreciate that. I thank you for that. And uh, mm -hmm. man, I'm attracted to success. And while I've been, you know, fortunate to have a storied career and have awesome business partners, I also know that leadership is about having a white belt, men white belt mentality. It's a skill set, and the journey's never done. We talked about this. You were just on my show about winning. It's a process and it's always about looking forward and you can never rest on your morals. So, you know, I'm smart enough to know that, Hey, there's a lot of th things I don't know. And uh, when we first met, you know, seeing you speak uh, our stories are so similar um they're not the same but they 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 rhyme they have you know strong analogy to them uh the way you commanded the room i could just tell a leader uh, i'm a leader and when i see a very strong leader who has presence and who has care and compassion it just really spoke to me and i was just, just extremely uh, impressed and blown away with your presentation and i've come a long way in my speaking career i still have a long way to go but there were some things that i just really noticed that i wanted to lean in and get some feedback and, um, you know, I know what it's like to be on the uh, giving end of coaching. And it's very frustrating when you give the knowledge and expertise and then the coaching isn't acted on it. So when you gave me some pointers, a couple different adjustments that I just took and implemented in terms of my franchise system, in terms of presentation, and I saw immediate response, mm. I just felt I had a duty, obligation, responsibility to do you a solid, acknowledge you. So that's the foundation of that. Have you thought about writing a book, but just don't have the time? We would love to help you make that dream come true this year. Introducing BNC Publishing. We offer an in-house three-step process to help you bring your book to life. The whole process only takes 60 to 90 days. Compared to 18 months for traditional publishing methods, we work fast. To see if we are a good fit to work together on your project, email our team at info at bennewman.net. That's info at bennewman.net. Now, back to the show. I, I love it. And I'm grateful for those words and grateful for the example that you set. And I, now let's talk about, let, let's talk about something else about you that I, I noticed that I find to be incredible. When people learn Bryce's story. And for those of you that listen to his show, the CEO show, and it was awesome being able to cut up and be on your show as well and be direct. We had some great direct conversations. I'd encourage oh, yeah. you to go listen to that episode because we really get deep and real, which is what it takes. A lot of coaches aren't willing to go there. But one of the things I love and admire about your story is that you invested in Fit Body Boot Camp. You know, Bedros didn't just come and recruit you and say, like, you're going to be the CEO of my organization. And, and, you know, I've read Man Up. I've gotten to meet Bedros. That's not the kind of guy that Bedros is. Like, Bedros is going to make you earn it. And I think it's, it's so unique to your story that you invested in something that you believed in which became such a significant belief that you're now the leader of and the CEO of Fit Body Boot Camp. So tell us your belief system on if you believe in something, sometimes you may have to take risk and you have to have faith that it's going to work out. But how did that risk and faith and belief and action that you take, how did it lead to you becoming the CEO of Fit Body Boot Camp? Which, which is really, a, and I don't want you to hold back. I mean, it is a powerhouse organization across this country uh, when it comes to the vision Bedros once had and what you've all built it to become. Oh, well, thank you. And I appreciate the nice words. Um, and I look back at the career and I'll kind of, you know, jump into the story, but um, <clears throat> I've been a salesperson, I've been a leader, a marketer, and the things that I've done in a coach are really just things that have worked for me that have I've had success with and I have passion for, and then I want to give that gift to others. And that's really the fabric of you know my career in general, uh, specifically how I land on Fit Body. I talked a little bit about my story, my background, um, you know, raising or being grown up in the rest of my life in the Midwest. Um, I had 17 jobs uh, by the time I graduated college. I was 11 years old when I started the workforce. I used to donate blood plasma uh, to put myself through school. And you know, I share that with you. There's you know. Probably you. There's many listeners out uh, out here that have had it worse than me. So I'm not, you know, saying a boohoo story. I'm just giving you my particular, you know, background and burn, if you will. But when I was 21 years young, when I put myself through Michigan State, the summer before I graduated, I got a job or an internship initially in Los Angeles, California. The blue skies, the beaches, the the sunshine, all that California, specifically LA, has to offer. 
The problem is they don't tell you when you're 21 years young, you're 3,000 miles from home, you don't have professional skills, you don't have the leadership, the energy, the enthusiasm, you don't have fitness in your life. It can be the plastic capital of the world. So Ben, be very candid with you and your audience. I had more dark days than good for the first couple of years. Um, but fortuitously, that changed. And this is why I love coaching and mentorship. I believe in it. I take action against it to this day. Uh, but uh, one of my dear friends from the Midwest uh, came from the west part of Michigan. Uh, we went to college together. He moved out west with me. And uh, we decided to live together for two years. And his name was Adam. And he was my first fitness mentor. And what he, Adam did was he introduced me to fitness, to lifting weights, circuit training, clean nutrition. Because up until that point... I was uh, not in shape. Fast food is a staple in my diet. I used to joke around that mm -hmm. uh, looking back that I was lift, uh, allergic to lifting weight. So that was the fabric of where I came from. So when he introduced me to all these things, the biggest thing he did is he introduced me to coaching and accountability. And that coaching accountability it really locked on for me at work because I would love to look you in the eye, Ben, and say, hey, I would have done this by myself, but I can't do that. And really what happened over a period of two years, but hyper-focused, you know, I followed uh, hyper-focused for six months, I should say. I followed along his program. I lifted the weights that he wanted me to lift. I ate what I wanted. he wanted me to eat. And ultimately, I followed the program and I dropped 20 pounds of body fat. I put 20 pounds of lean muscle on, but way more important that then, I changed my life. And that was really mm. the fitness transformation that gave me the belief uh, at that point that, hey, I want to do something more of my life. And at that point, it didn't even occur to me that I wanted to get in the fitness industry. In fact, my sales career, my life in general, but my sales career, I went from the least performing sales rep in the company all the way to the highest performing sales rep of the company. And Ben, one thing changed. It wasn't the sales script. It wasn't the follow-up. It was the way I showed up, the energy, the enthusiasm. It just lit me up. And that was the foundation. And, and how, I guess, to, to, to segue how I got exposed to the fitness industry. Cause up at that point in time, it rocked my world. It changed my life. Things were firing on uh, all cylinders for me, but I never actually imagined that I would go into the fitness industry until one day, some guy walks up to me at the gym and he said, Hey, I've been you know following you. I was curious how you eat, how you lift weights. And Ben, this light bulb went on like me, like me, I could give this back to other people, the the gift of fitness, which has been blessed in my life. Mm. And that was the aha that I had then really to kind of take that step of uh, that next step, if you will, to become a personal trainer. And then once I did that, speaking of Bedros and Fit Body Bootcamp, this is where it comes in. So I think I updated my Facebook profile, a certified personal trainer after I uh, went through my accreditation through National Academy, Academy of Sports Medicine. And, uh, I started receiving ads from this guy named Bedros Cooling, who now is my business partner and my mentor and been, you know, in the trenches with him for over 12 years. And he started talking about how to run a fitness business, how to launch a fitness business, how to get better you know, results for your clients. And I was interested in that. So I opted in his email list and I paid attention and I followed on for a little while. And uh, in early 2012 is when Bedros was shifting the Fit Body Bootcamp brand from a licensee program all the way to a proper brick and mortar fran brick and mortar franchise system, and I certainly was interested. So I started paying attention and following along. I put in an expression of interest, which is an application, and um, I reached out to probably about a handful of franchise partners or other owners in the brand. It was a very small brand at the time, and uh, I did all the diligence in the world. And speaking of investment, kind of you know coming full circle after you know a few months of diligence and researching and reaching out, I decided to do the most exciting but also the most terrifying and scaring decision in my life. And I invested my life savings in this little dream of business ownership called Fit Body mm. Bootcamp. And I launched my first location November 5th on a very cold, dark, damp morning in Southern California, about uh, 15 miles from Disneyland. And uh, I'll give you the highlights, but Ben, there was a lot of lowlights and learning lessons and entrepreneurial battle scars uh, in the process. And we can talk about those, but really from the, the years of 2012 to 2018, I scaled to five locations. I brought my wife on board, my brother on board, my mom, my sister, being at a family affair. Mm. And um, the, the crescendo moment, if you will, in 2018, when our brand was really starting to grow in terms of exponential growth. At that point, you know, uh, believing in mentorship and relationships and being an action taker, I was one of the most successful franchise partners of the brand, and I developed a strong relationship with Bedros, and he knew that he wanted a bit more owner influence in the brand, uh, so he reached out to me, and eventually, or initially, it was the vice president role, uh, but then, you know, after joining our headquarters system in 2018, and with a lot of success in action taking, uh, ended up uh, being awarded the CEO position in 2021, so I guess big picture, that's how a guy from the Midwest who 
who used to be uh, allergic to lifting weights and fast food, the staple of his diet, became a certified personal trainer and then eventually uh, the fitness the CEO or the CEO of international fitness brand. I love it. And, you know, it, it leads me to a final question for you. And the question is something that's very, very important to me. And I, I said this, I think you made me repeat it a handful of times when we were on uh, your show. I always like to say that you can only lead somebody to the level of discipline in which you live. And it's one of the things before we met, when you first reached out, I, I like to see, okay, it, it, the person who they say they are, is that who they are? And for you being in the world, you're in the fitness space. You're either disciplined or you're not. There's plenty of people who own gyms who are 50 pounds overweight and they just love the business model of owning a gym. And I just, I respected the voice of discipline that you spoke with and how you led. And then when I met you, I'm like, Dude, this guy's in shape. He's got it together. Why is that so important to you as, as a leader to be disciplined, to remain fit? Because you've had enough success. You could, you could put weight on, stop working out. You're bit, you'd still have a business. You'd still no, that, be growing. That would be the day the business starts to die, Ben. That would be the day. That's my mindset, at least. As the leader, you need to be able to lead ex by example. Moral, th moral authority uh, by John um, uh, Maxwell, who is a, le a mentor in leadership from afar. Um, and I learned these principles, I guess, you know, in, in my youth, and I made many poor decisions in terms of leaderships and learning lessons. So I'm not saying I'm perfect, far from it. In fact, the opposite, a lot of the leadership qualities and characteristics I've been able to take with me is because of my learning lessons and my failures. Um, but what I've learned is that leadership is always the problem. It's always the solution. It's the most important thing mm -hmm. in someone's life and success. And uh, I have a leadership framework. My philosophy on leadership is adversity is your advantage. Take whatever happens to you. Life happens for you, not to you. Okay. And take whatever it is and then make it better. There's some sort of gift that you can reframe, that you mm -hmm. can take action. You can make a better situation. So that's my philosophy, but really Ben, going back to your question to put a bow on it. Um, there's three pillars of leadership that I follow. And uh, the first is you may, need, need to be able to lead yourself, self-leadership. You can't lead anyone else unless you can lead yourself. Then when you lead yourself, you can lead your family. And then when you lead your family, you can lead your empire. And when you break down self-leadership, for me, it first starts with fitness. If I'm the CEO of an international fitness franchise and I'm you know, coaching and mentoring my franchise partners, my coaches and my clients, and I don't look and act the part, I'm inauthentic and I'm not real. And Ben, humbling myself, the best way that I've learned to lead is through moral authority, walking my own talk. And when you walk your own talk, then ultimately people follow. And that's been a secret to my success. It, it, it's it's incredible. It shows and the belief system shows and the energy that you show up with. I want people to be able to stay connected to that energy, that vulnerability, that honesty, that example that you set as a leader. What's the best way for people to do that, Bryce? Uh, well, thank you, my friend. Uh, you can follow me on all my uh, social media, media handles, Real Bryce Henson, not to be confused with fake Bryce Henson. There you can also find uh, my YouTube show, which is, uh, again, on the handle, The Real Bryce Henson. But the show is the CEO show with uh, yours truly, Bryce Henson. In fact, we just talked about earlier, but uh, our episode, your episode is going to drop in July. So highly encourage you to follow along. You're going to get a lot of gold. Bryce, I appreciate you so much. From uh, one Spartan dog to another, Go green. Go white, my friend. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate you, my friend. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for being an example of what leadership means. You know, I often like to say that, you know, we can have a conversation with somebody and they tell you how great they want to be. But then when we find out, when we have a conversation with their action, you find out how bad they really want it. And uh, I love the action that you show up with in this world. It's why we do this show every week. It's why I'm going to ask you to share this episode with somebody who's maybe struggling with their discipline. They're maybe struggling with the example that they're setting. They're struggling with the example of knowing that they must be able to lead themselves before they can lead anybody. And you got to stay connected to that burn, which will ignite your why and purpose and cause you to show up on the days you don't feel like it. And especially after you win. This has been The Burn, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Burn.